very much for the warm welcome and thank you to the organizers of the event for inviting me to get to be such of a or a part of such an inspiring group of speakers. I think you're in for a really wonderful day. My name is Emma and I'm a teaching fellow here at Quest University Canada in the Physical Sciences. And between that and contract teaching work, I spend approximately 500 hours of my year in the classroom with students, and that excludes mentoring and office hours time. I'm also Canadian, I'm from Victoria, and I spent my life and career in Victoria, Edmonton, Ottawa, and now Squamish. And last but not least, I'm a female scientist. I'm a chemist by training, and I'm currently a physical sciences educator. And you're probably wondering how all these puzzle pieces of my identity come together. For me, they're all rooted in a phrase that today I would like to discuss, I would like to interrogate, and hopefully at the end of this, I would like to reclaim. And that phrase is, I'm sorry. So I want you to think about how many times you think you apologize in a day. And have you ever counted? And if you have, have you ever thought about what it is that you're actually apologizing for? How frequently do you think that you have apologized to a solid object for bumping into it? <laughs> right? We've all done it. I did it yesterday. Um, and how frequently do you think that you're apologizing for being yourself? So I'm sorry is a phrase that's supposed to mean something, right? It's our opportunity to talk to another person, to come to a resolution in a conflict-free way. I'm sorry is a phrase that is essential to our communication as people, and if we're gonna use I'm sorry as freely as we use the word hello, it's not gonna mean anything anymore. Now I started to think about the phrase I'm sorry when I started teaching at Quest in 2016 logging significantly more classroom hours than I ever had in my career. And I started to notice a, notice a pattern in a lot of my classes. So when students had a question, a lot of the times their hands would sit at their shoulders, their ears, maybe their foreheads. Sometimes it would be hard for me to even tell if they had a question at all. And a lot of questions would start with, I just, you probably already said this, this is probably stupid, or I'm sorry. It was as if every question required this qualifier, as if to have a question in the first place was to be doing something wrong. And this is a school that tells their students to question everything. <laughs> like that's, that's what we do at Quest. And yet people still felt that they had to apologize. And many of these questions were perfectly reasonable. Questions about repeating myself so students had good notes. Asking for clarification on something so that they understood what we just talked about. Students would apologize for asking questions where they were taking something they learned in previous days and applying it to what they had just learned in class. And as educators, that's exactly our expectation. We want students to ask questions. We want them to understand in that moment. And we want students to see a connection across the larger narrative of the course. And my students were apologizing for doing that. And I needed to look at my role in this classroom culture. Now, I didn't think that students were apologizing so much because I'm very scary and intimidating. Because I'm not. <laughs> Five, four, four, love pink. Uh, I thought probably they were apologizing because maybe I was too. So I started to look, uh, conduct a highly scientific study, sample size of one, and I started to log how much I was apologizing. And I started to look at what it was that I was apologizing for. In the most extreme example, I apologized 20 times in a three-hour class. And I apologized for everything. I apologized for giving readings and assignments, although that's sort of the point of university. I apologized for giving tricky questions, 
although those are the best way to assess if you know something. They're the most fun and exciting when you can actually answer them. I apologize for making small mistakes with the whiteboard that I would catch before anybody else spotted them. Apologize for everything. And I had to think about what sort of role model I was for my students. And what sort of role model I was becoming for other young women who want to enter the physical sciences. To think about what it was that I was sorry for. Did I feel like I had to be sorry for being early career? For being too inexperienced? Too young? Too female for my physical sciences classroom? I had to think about why I felt that I was sorry. I was experiencing the dreaded imposter syndrome. I felt that to make a mistake, I was letting down the 20 students in my classroom. That to make one error meant that I had ruined my entire 56 contact hours of class time. <laughs> that to make one error was to not only let myself down, was, but to, was to let down all other women who are trying to work in the physical sciences, that to make one error was to not just let myself down, but to let down everybody who had trained me, including a lot of formidable female academics, my mother included. And perhaps most problematic, I was setting a really bad practice for scientific standards. While we seek to ask, answer questions, it's not solely rooted in perfectionism. It's also rooted in curiosity, asking good questions. I was sort of setting the standard that you couldn't do that. So why are our students so apologetic? And are female students really more apologetic than male students? And the short answer to that question is mostly yes. But one of the reasons for this is, is more nuanced than I had originally given credit for. When both women and men in classrooms are asked to report how much they apologize, as well as how frequently they think they've committed an offense that justifies an apology, women report more of both. It's not just that women are apologizing more, it's they feel that they have to apologize more. And I needed to stop apologizing for everything because I can't let that keep going for all of the students in my classroom, and especially for young women who want to be in the physical sciences. And why are our students so apologetic? Well, a lot of what students are experiencing is a lot of what I experienced. A lot of what we all experience in our day-to-day -day lives and jobs and relationships. The fear of saying something dumb in front of your peers. The fear of being imperfect in one given moment. The fear of saying something that isn't quite there yet. And it's something that I think we all need to let go of. So I'm going to send you away with some homework. Educators want to do. Uh, I would like you to do a couple things for me. The first thing I'd like you to do is conduct your own highly scientific study. Sample size one. I would like you to track how many times you say that you're sorry in a day. And I would like you to pay attention to what it is that you're apologizing for. Because I think you're going to be alarmed at the end of the day when you take a look at the numbers and what it is that you're saying you're sorry for. The other thing I would like you to do is I would like you to continue apologizing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I want you to apologize when you should. If you drop the ball on a group project, that justifies an apology. If you cut someone off in the middle of what they're saying, that justifies an apology. If you make an assumption about somebody's capabilities because of who they are and what they look like, that justifies an apology. But to ask a question, to be curious, to be a good student and a good classroom and community member, that should never justify an apology. So for yourself, for your friends, and for your family, I would like you to break convention and reclaim the phrase, I'm sorry. Thank you.